uh, we are about a couple, what, about an hour and a bit off of uh, Jim Benning's media availability with Vancouver fans. I'm not going to lie. When I saw the tweet from Vancouver PR uh, saying that he was going to speak to the media, I thought, hey, maybe there's going to be a change in behind the bench. Uh, the Canucks uh, lost yet again on Wednesday night against the Colorado Avalanche. They had a slightly better effort than what they produced over the last few games, but a loss is still a loss. Uh, CJ, I know you were quoting some quotes from that presser. What was Jim Benning saying? What was the sense of the press conference? What were your takeaways from his media availability with uh, the media out in Vancouver? Well, let's call it as it is. This was a no-win situation. I mean, when you're at the spot the Canucks are in, you know, you heard people last night at the game um, chanting fire Benning. I know it wasn't the whole crowd, but there was a portion. Um, You know, I don't know there's anything you can really get in front of a microphone and say and win the day. And I say that knowing, look, we're both journalists, like like the journalists out there deserve to be able to ask these questions. I mean, they are the conduits to the fans. But, you know, I, if you put yourself in Jim Benning's shoes, I don't I don't know there was really anything that you could win the fans over with. I mean, this this is giving me big time vibes back to where the Maple Leafs were just before Brandon Shanahan came in as the new president and completely clean house, like from top to bottom in, in the organization. And I'm not predicting that will be the outcome here. I think there's some some key differences in that, but you know, th- there was a, a season seven years ago, the Leafs lost a game to Nashville is actually seven years ago today. It's what maybe is put yep. in my memory, nine to two to Nashville. And then they get the whole salute gate thing. And they just, they were a team that was meant to compete that became non-competitive. Um, and you know, it wasn't as though they were completely bereft of young prospects. I mean, Morgan Riley and Nazem Kadri were both, you know, recently drafted players on that team. You know, you, you still had Phil Kessel and Dion Phaneuf and Joffrey Lupo. I mean, you, you had, you had what should have been at least a competitive team and they weren't, they weren't finding ways to win any games. And and the fan base was very restless with the plan. And so, you know, what you hear from Jim Benning in his press conference, we're fragile. We're looking at everything, certainly not any sense that he feels his job is safe or that we should say that Travis green, his head coach's job is safe. Um, but you know, I, it feels like we're getting closer to where you need to see something <laughs> And whether that's a firing or multiple firings or or a return to form for the team, you know, if, if the team bounces back and wins some games, that that would that would ease things here. And so, you know, you get the sense Jim Benning's trying to hold off. He's trying to like keep back winter. You know what I mean? He's, he's this huge immovable object that's coming at him, and he's just trying to hold it off in time for things to right themselves. And you know, this is this is this is sort of like a soap opera right now. This is the most combustible situation in the league by far. And it's a combustible market and, and with good reason, you know, I think that they're, you know, eight years into the five-year plan there and they're still in the situation. So, you know, I'm certainly not picking on the fans by, by terming them that way, but man, it, it was, it was difficult to watch, frankly, from afar. It was just, I didn't feel like he was in a position where he could say anything. And I didn't feel like the reporters were in a position where they could really advance the story. Was there a moment in the press conference where Jim Bedding kind of handled a question and you really felt like, like, you mentioned the fact off top that, yes, it was pretty much a no-win situation. But what was the question or answer that really kind of reaffirmed that? What was the back and forth or what question was asked that made you realize, man, like Jim Benning really is in tough in this press conference and in his job in Vancouver? Well, probably the question from Farhan Lalji where he literally said, what about your own job? I mean, you know, I actually don't know Jim Benning that well, but like I can still see the human being behind the situation, right? And it would be hard to imagine after hearing people chanting for your job to have to face the media and then take that kind of question. And, and, you know, I thought he handled it fine in that he said, you know, basically that's up to ownership. You know, that's not up to me. Um, again, not, not really sure what more he could say, but, you know, I think it was clear he understands what's at stake here and what the possibilities are and all those types of things. And so you know, that was probably the one just cause that's, kind of a moment of truth type of question. You know, he was also asked about Travis Green, as I mentioned, and sort of danced around that without saying, you know, he, he said the coaching staff's working hard. They're in there trying to find solutions, but this is weighing on them. He said that a lot. Like, this is weighing on all of us. You know, you can feel this this heavy sort of smoke that's 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 on everyone's shoulders. Everyone's carrying around a backpack full of rocks right now in the Canucks organization. And so, you know, I, I, I do get why he spoke and I get why they, they, they allowed the media to do that. But man, it's, it's like you either need wins or someone's losing their job. Like it's, something has to give. That's, that's where it really feels like they're at. 
Last question on on the Canucks. Did you watch them on Wednesday night against the against the uh, the Colorado Avalanche? It's totally cool if you did, and I'm just curious if you did. Period and a half. Uh, actually, didn't think they played poorly, but you know, I think the one thing we all underestimate. I mean, first of all, Colorado is you know still one of the best teams in the league, so there's maybe a bit of a talent or roster disparity there to, that accounts for the the way the game went, but also. You know, I think that momentum and and confidence really is, you know, a huge part of the sport that's that's sometimes hard to put your finger on. You know, it wasn't so long ago the Leafs really stumbled out of the gate and they lost the game seven to one in Pittsburgh and lost two nights later in Carolina, and then they won nine of ten. Um, you know, and, and look more sort of like what you'd expect, their star players scoring and all those types of things. But I, I don't know it's that a big overall happened in that time. It's just some 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 of the maybe concerns or, or the things that like way on you, like went for the Leafs. They, they, they came back at a couple of those games early on in their streak. And then all of a sudden like, Oh yeah, we can do this. And and you just start to be thinking a little bit less. And so, you know, I, what I saw in Vancouver was a team that actually was to my eyes, trying hard um, was, you know, gave some degree of, of response after, you know, their road trip in that game, but, you know, still missing confidence, still missing you know, Elias Pedersen making a difference or Brock Besser, you know, still with a difficult blue line situation and, and they can't kill a penalty. Right. I mean, we talked about that no. on Monday, but I mean, what was it? Three power play goals against it in Colorado in the game. Anyway, the point is they're at the very bottom of the lead and killing a penalty. And if you're on the wrong end, especially teams, you don't win a lot of games. And so I, again, I, some of that speaks to confidence. I think it's, it's, I mean, obviously this is not a, this is a flawed <laughs> roster, but they shouldn't be among the worst teams in the league. And right now they are kind of playing like one of the worst teams in the league. Yeah, I think they allowed two power play goals in the third, including the go-ahead goal, which eventually led to Colorado winning. And yeah, seeing some of the videos in Vancouver of fans yelling fire bending, whether it's in the arena or in the concourse after the game. Yeah, I can imagine why a lot of people in Vancouver feel that times are pretty heavy on them. It's not fun to be a Canucks fan right now, and I can't imagine it's any fun for Travis Green or Jim Benning to be in their jobs, even if I do think that both guys should probably be gone from their jobs, considering what is going on in Vancouver and considering what's going on with the roster where they should be at. I, I think they could use some changes there. But yeah, it, it doesn't make what they're going through any less easier. Exactly. Um, I mean, oh, no, no, no wins there, man. Like w- without some actual wins, there's no wins. <laughs> 